Welcome back, uh, Mike here from Mac Photography. This is a short tutorial on how to do what has been named the Max method. Pretty much tried to get a tilt shift effect by using multiple photos stacked together, or focus stacked, to create this gradual blur. Now in this tutorial I'll show you how I create that and just how I done an edit on this photo itself. Let's get started. So you'll see here we've got a sequence of images. Uh, there's about 17 photos taken with different uh, focus points. Um, these are shot on the Canon 6D with a 50L f1.2 lens, uh, 4 seconds at f1.2 and ISO 3200. Um, the reason why it shot at f1.2, the widest aperture, is to get the roundest um, out of focus stars. Uh, if you start stopping down, you start getting octagonal or hexagonal shapes, which we don't really want for this effect to really work. Now, as I click through, you can see very fine adjustments in the focus until it starts to get sharp. There's a little bit of movement between those two. I'll just check. See which ones. All right, so I'll probably leave out that one and start with this one. So first of all, we edit it. Um, this is currently unedited. You can see Aurora in the background there. Um, I'll probably just reduce the highlights a little bit. Add a bit of clarity. Some vibrance, saturation, just to lift up those colors a bit more. Uh, white balance, we choose something a little bit more pinker. Because this isn't a uh, scientifically accurate um, piece of artwork, I'm not too bothered about um, doing a soft edit on it, I guess. Um, so we want to go, we want to make it arty. 30 noise reduction, 35 on the color. You start seeing the difference that makes. And then enable profile correction, that so brings it up quite nicely. So before, after. And that's probably about it we'll do in Lightroom. Now select all your images, synchronize. And once that's synchronized, then we so right click, open as layers in Photoshop. So now that they've opened up in Photoshop, you'll see that they're all on their own individual layer. Um, now what I usually do, that you don't have to do it this way, but I usually reverse the layer order. So I select all the layers, layer, um, arrange, and reverse. So I want the out of focus layer on the top. Now so also need to know how many layers there are. So we've got 16 photos. Now what I usually do is I only want to do this, I want some of the stars to be sharp then I want it to gradually go out of focus. Now I could do an even blocks but I don't want to do that. So if you've got Illustrator and open up a new document in Illustrator. Create a thin square or rectangle. Duplicate it, holding down the Option key on a Mac. Then make it a lot bigger. Now, so remember that number of frames. If it's 16 frames. So we want to blend this on a Mac, Command Option B to blend. And we want to check the blend options, specified steps, and so we want 14. Preview, click OK. Now it looks a little bit like a mess, but what we're going to do now is expand that. Ungroup, Command Shift G. 
and select them all. There's my align. There we go. Change the aligned key object with zero millimeters. So now they're all in line. Now I'm just going to reduce the size of those. So you can see there, nice gradual um, lineup. Now to make it easier to see these, I'm just going to select every second one and move them aside. So now you can see what we're doing. Now I'm actually going to rotate this. Hold down shift to get a smooth rotation. Just one more that I missed. Copy those. And then I'm going to paste that file into here as a shape layer. Now we can command T to transform. So I want to line that roughly up to about there. So this is going to give me a rough guide of how to mask each one of these layers so it gradually goes out of focus. I'm going to set that opacity to 50% and just create some guides. Command R or Control R on a PC will toggle the rulers. Just click and drag until you get to the point where you want it. Doesn't have to be perfect. Now there are a lot quicker and easier ways to do this, but this sort of system works really well. There we go. So we've got our guides in. And I'm going to hide that. Now I'm going to put my first mask on the top layer. And I press G for gradient tool, so I'm double check that it's all white to white. That's okay. Now if I do a test, holding down shift, dragging down, it's going to mask the top end off. So that's just figuring out which direction I need to go. I'm just going to go halfway between that layer and click and drag up. Now the next layer, second one, click and drag up. If I push the, um, this, the button just above the return key, kind of the call button backslash or whatever, then you can actually see where that mask is going to be. Now that will help me with my next one, so I'm just go from there to there. Around, Let me just go through each layer one by one. Another thing to do is actually line up a box with where you're up to. Now the other thing you can do is actually just hold down Option, click on the mask and drag it, and it will copy it over there. Unlink it, Command T, shift it down, and expand all of it. So it's just going to copy that onto the next layer, and just move it down. Just 
side. Until we get to our second to last lamb, that's the last one that requires a mask. Now if I turn those off, we have now got a gradual shot going from nice and sharp to out of focus. Alright, so what I'm looking for now is double ups of the uh, stars. You can see they create kind of a halo. So what, what's happening there is an overlap of a graduated mask. If I start with one of the base layers, this first layer is pretty good, there's not much going on there. So the second layer here we can start to see a bit of that double up going on, especially around this area here. What let's do is use a small eraser and just bring in those stars. If it's not working on the neck on some of the stars, it means that it's the layer above. So it's not the layer above. Toggle it on and off to have a look. So these things here will make a difference. Just makes the whole file look a lot more tidier and just helps with that. Kind of tilt shift style. You don't have to every single star that you see is nice having a bit of randomness. I'm using the X button to toggle black and white for a razor and brush. Now that one won't work because it's the wrong layer, so it'll be the one above it. There we go. If you use, press V that selects your selection tool and hold down command on a Mac or, op, or control on a PC and click then that will select that layer that you are wanting to find. Step up to the um, ones close to the top. Mm -hmm. Alright, so it's looking pretty good. Next thing I'm going to do. So now we're going to need this for this layer, so we'll delete that. So we've already got the um, guides there. So we we'll group those. We can see four and after. The difference that we've made. Now, it's, now what we're going to do is just touch up this file, put a new layer, and it retouch. And I don't want this car here. So we should have chose a better place to park. Yep. Now using the clone stamp tool, I'm just going to find a bit of common ground. I'm not too worried about covering up those um, pylons there.
I'm not too worried about doubling up on the retouch right now. It's an easy one to fix. Find another spot. Now we don't want these double ups here in pixels. Find random bits to retouch in. Get left up. I'm going to mask that. I'm using a slightly firmer brush to erase the foreground back up. No one would ever know. Now next we're going to do a bit of um, contrast adjustment. So what this is going to do is just give it a bit more pop. Duplicate that, Command J or Control J on a PC. And so it's really made the colours come out. Now some people might find that to be a bit extreme. Then I that contrast. Now I don't exactly want it on the little boathouse there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same trick as in my last um, tutorial, was to actually Shift and drag, so it's too much. Shift and drag just there, just so we get the tree line there. Okay. Now command Shift I or Control Shift I on PC, and then that. It's not quite perfect. That's a good start. Then just go in and brush a little bit more. Also, on the layer, if you double click it, add a feather to that mask. I also do want some of the contrast to go in onto this layer, so we'll just reduce the density a little bit there. It's probably a little bit too extreme, so I'm just going to go. You've got your selection tool on. You can toggle the keys one, two, three, four, right up to nine, and that will set your opacity. So if we go to about 80% on this, then I'll save that, and that will open up in Lightroom. I'm just going to do a couple of small tweaks to it. First thing I want to do is lift up these, the shadow area a bit more. Get a bit more clarity. Kind of gives it a more painted feeling. But for this kind of, kind of art piece, it's kind of suitable. A bit of vibrance. And for the top section, I kind of want it to change more into the purple side. So add a bit of blue. Okay, more like that. Now we'll have a look at the noise. Just a little bit of grain in there. So can add a bit of touch of noise reduction. Don't like to go overboard. So if you go too far, it just goes, it turns into a blurry mess. So you do want a little bit of grain in there. Oh, this is astrophotography after all. I'll probably just lift up those shadows a little bit as well. Use the curves. And that pretty much finishes it. There we go. The next method.